Last Saturday we had British Masters middleweight title taking place on a WSO show at the K2 Leisure Centre in Crawley. Anthony Young v. Lee Noble. Will, you were there. Um, how did it go? Yeah, well, uh, Lee Noble won from the ro- right side of the bill. He uh, outpointed Anthony Young. Uh, Anthony Young, of course, is a local lad. He's from Crawley. He, uh, to be honest, he, he, he's a really good boxer when he sticks to his boxing. and uh, That's what he did at the beginning of the fight. But as the fight went on, he got sucked into a war which suited Noble much better. Uh, Noble, you know, he really was the, the the one with the power in the contest. He could hurt Young, whereas he hasn't got any stoppage wins, so he, he hasn't really got the power to hurt his opponent. So uh, the, the fourth round was a disaster for Young. He really got hammered. It looked like his trainer Jim Evans was going to pull him out with the towel. Ian John Lewis, to be honest, could have pulled him out. Uh, to his immense credit, he stuck he stuck to it, roared on by his home fans, and uh, he slipped to a 97-95 points defeat in the end. Not seen much of Lee Noble, is he a typical Ingle fighter? He's not actually, he doesn't mess his opponents about as well. On this showing he didn't mess his opponent about as much as you'd expect from an Ingle fighter. He's, he was very good defensively, a tight defence. You know, as the Americans say, he wasn't afraid to stick in the pocket and uh, let his opponent throw shots at him and then roar him back with his own more powerful efforts himself. And on the undercard, the um, great name George Simpes took on Gilbert Eastman. How did that one go? Oh, I was really looking forward to this one. This is uh, the reason why I went down there, to be honest. And he's he's a banger by his record. He's a uh, he's a real knockout artist. He he knocked out Cello Render, and he's only lost one uh, by a point to Prince Aaron at the York Hall. To be honest, I was a bit disappointed in Kets Simpersa uh, from Western Supermare. Yes, he was powerful. He's got those big, broad shoulders, and he he puts out a lot of shots. But he's not very creative. Gilbert is at the wrong end of his career really he's coming off two stoppage losses obviously uh, firstly he got blitzed and around by Lockett and then Gary Wilkham did him as well not a bad effort from Eastman uh, he did actually have Katsimpa's down in the third more an off balance shot Katsimpa's blazed straight back and uh, hurt him in the same round in the end referee Ken Curtis scored, scored it a, a relatively fair 59-57 points to uh, George and while um, Thomas Ulrich was losing his European light heavyweight title over in Germany. His former opponent, Matthew Barnes, is on the undercard, I believe. Yeah, he was there. He was uh, up against a Norwegian called uh, Kim Jensen. To be honest, it was typical Barney. The crowd are never really going to like him. Uh, back foot boxing, staying on the ropes, good jab, defensively brilliant. Still really looked scared to take a shot uh, to really give some good offence. Norwegian didn't really have any ideas, to be honest barrels forwards, tried lead uppercuts, quite content to just to drop his hands and let Barney hit him with the jab. You know, he just brushed off the shots. No no sign of the shots taking any effect at all. But at the end of uh, six fairly routine Matthew Barney rounds, a man from Southampton got his hands raised and I guess his rehabilitation from Frotch is still in progress. Is he still a player on the title scene, do you think? Uh, to be honest, we, I personally think he, he could be. It's whether people want to give him a fight. He's not very... Uh, entertaining yeah he could do something even at 34 um, so we just have to see what he gets offered and I believe there are four other undercard fights with a couple of local boys on them how do they go the one I'd like to talk about first was uh, Terry Adams uh, who is usually quite a durable uh, character from Birmingham nicknamed the Bulldog he actually quit in the second uh, uncharacteristically against Jay Morris a colourful name he's got the Isle of Wight assassin Jay badly hurt his man in the second round and then he simply just turned his back and he said, oh, you won, mate, and he walked back to the corner. It's very unlike Adams. He's normally, like you say, very durable. Um, lives up to his nickname, really, the Bulldog. Yeah, he's, he comes to last the distance, earn his money, and uh, to fulfil the journeyman role. But uh, Jay really has got some power, although he, he can be stopped himself. Yeah, a good result for Jay. And yeah, I saw um, Robin Deakin, another defeat for him. Yeah, Rockin' Robin Deakin was on there, you know, colourful character, local lad. I didn't think he did badly last time out against Vinnie Mitchell, had him on the deck. Tonight was a step too far, Graham over in the corner and heavily supported by Ross the Boss Minter at ringside, but he, he didn't really have the tools for the job against Steve Gethin. He tried all he knew, but Gethin really was just too solid, you know, got through to the end really and took a convincing win.
Beat you um, going over to Italy on Friday to fight for the European Union title. Giuseppe Lori, 50 fight veteran, going to be some tough fight for you, mate. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's going to be a good fight. He's very durable. Uh, he knows the way around the ring, but um, obviously me and Paul Cook have worked on a strategy, hopefully, that we can get through it and just outwork him and hopefully stop him late, you know? How's the prep race been going for the fight? Yeah, brilliant. I mean, I've had great sparring with the likes of Nicky Cook, uh, Colin Lyons and um, Kevin Mitchell, so I've got the best sparring in the country, you know? And have you had um, Yui Geller help me out this time round or not? No, no, I spoke to him a few times. I've been doing a lot of positive thinking, but I mean, I think it's time now. I can't on my own, and you know, I've got the mind power now anyway to get through what I've got to get through. You've um, been avoided since winning the Irish title with that great result over Michael Gomez. Um, you've only had three, four rounders. Is that going to affect you? Do you think? No, not at all. I mean, I've had. I mean, if you have good preparation of sparring and all that sort of work before the fight, I mean, as, as the rounds go on, I'm only going to get better, you know, and. and since I've been with Paul Cook, I mean, I've improved a lot, you know, with all the sparring and techniques that we've been doing and, and things like that. And, I mean, obviously now it's another big opportunity like the Michael Gomez fight. And, I mean, it's nothing to do with that. I mean, you look at my career all the way through, I've had to knock people out to get a decision or I've had to, you know, well win the fights. I mean, there's a few times I've been robbed and that, that's been at home in England. So I know what I've got to do when I go to Italy. I'm not going to get it on point, so I know what I've got to do. I'll just jump straight on him and, and just keep working, you know. And why haven't you been fighting much? Have you been offered fights or not? Uh, no, no, I ain't been offered nothing really. I mean, we got offered, um, we put the fight out to Lenny Dawes for fighting Lenny Dawes, but obviously this fight come up at the same time. I'd love to have fought Lenny Dawes, but, the, and, and the truth of it is, is Kev, I'm not no light work weight, but I ain't had the opportunities at light weight, and now I want to have the, you know, I've, I've took the opportunity at light weight, but I'm going to go back down to light weight, because I am a light weight, you know. There was talk about you facing Romanoff at one stage, was that ever a possibility? Well, uh, Frank Maloney said the fight was made, I mean, but Malaria pulled out against Grandma on that show, so that show fell through, so hopefully if I can go and win this title, we can mo move me on, you know, but my, my future don't sit at light weight, well, my future sits at light weight. And how do you think um, Romanoff and Fexton will go? It's a good fight. Uh, I'd like, love to see Faxton beat him. I mean, the only uh, problems that I think Faxton's got with Romanoff is, I mean, he's very much like Dave Stewart, Romanoff. Uh, not in the sense of the tallness, but the, the way he's behind his straight punches, and obviously punches two, three times as hard as Dave Stewart, you know? I mean, that's obviously a fight you'd, you'd love to have if, if you get through this one, Faxton or Romanoff, for the European title, mate. Uh, Oh, definitely, definitely. I was, or, or, or someone for the British side. I mean, I don't know what Faxon's going to do for the, with the British after he's defended, you know what I mean? Uh, whatever, you know, I, I've sent letters to the board about fighting Faxon. I'd love to fight Faxon. I think he's a great champion, a great fighter. I respect him 100%, but I think I'm at that level, you know? I mean, I know I've had my record don't show that, uh, obviously, like their records do, but like I say, records of a DJ, you know? It's, it's about who you beat last, and I mean, it's only because I had the opportunity to fight anybody, you know, since I've beat Gomez, you know? And obviously you moved to Paul Cook now, um, was that just a case of moving trainer to get a different different outlook on the training and things like that, or? M my old trainer, George, I mean, I've been with him since the and I've been with him since I've been young, and uh, he, he, had, he had business commitments and, and, and things at that time, but I mean, I think it was good, uh, it was a good change, it was a good time to change, I mean, and I think, I'll be, on, I'll be honest, Paul Cook is definitely, without a doubt, the best trainer in this country, without a doubt, and I mean, he's got, he's got me head right, he's got me in... My motivation, right, he's got everything, everything's come together, you know. I mean, I'm sad that, obviously, I didn't finish my career with Jules, but, you know, things happen, he's out there, he's out there going on the living, like, you know, there's not, there's not that much money in boxing. Yeah, no, I think, I think Paul Cook could do a lot of me. I mean, Colin Lyons has come on 100%, so has Kevin Mitchell, and so has, uh, Nicky Cook, you know. And have you been training full-time for this, or have you still been working as well? No, full-time, full-time, I've been sparring and... We've, me, and, me and Kevin have been doing our preparations together because you've got Johan for next week, you know, like the week after mine. And I've been doing everything right, you know, running with Paul in the mornings over Raynor. We've been So I ain't been missing no runs. He's been having me running with him. I mean, he, don't, he didn't really want me to take the fight a lot, but I've made the way easy, Kevin. I wish, like, obviously it was a lightweight. And I mean, there's talk of me fighting Dave Stewart for the Southern Area title. And, you know, hopefully that fight will come off afterwards, you know. But obviously I ain't going to look beyond what, what I've got to do Friday. And that's all for this edition of